Saw dudes. I just made a skip grenade build using Shinobu's Vow, and it reminded me of an old Lucky Raspberry build I created at the start of Season 22. I remember seeing a lot of hate for the rework since it seemed like a net nerf, so I tried it out again. Today's build is again focused on grenade spamming for great AoE damage. In the first half of the video, you'll see a Legend Lost Sector run 5 light under the recommended level. This build is actually stupid fun and puts in some serious work. At the end of the video, I'll share some thoughts on the rework and how it affected the exotic's identity. Let's get started. The super I chose to use was Gathering Storm, since it can jewel targets, which synergizes with Lucky Raspberry, and because of its great boss DPS capabilities. Gambler's Dodge is the best choice since it is a perfect match with Combination Blow. Combination Blow causes power of melee kills to grant a stack of 60% increased melee damage, fully recharges Gambler's Dodge, and heals. At the maximum of 3 stacks, melee damage is increased by about 4 times since the buff is multiplicative. The grenade we have to use is Arc Bolt Grenade, obviously for its synergy with Lucky Raspberry. The aspects for today are Flow State and Lethal Current. Flow State makes us amplified when we kill an enemy affected by Joel. While we are amplified, we receive 200% additional base class ability regenerate, 50 reload speed, a 0.8 reload duration multiplier, and 66% damage resist during dodges. Lethal Current makes it so that melee hits on jolted enemies apply blind. After dodging, melee lunge distance is increased and the next melee hit applies jolt and sends out an aftershock to nearby enemies within 5 meters. Fragments for the build are Spark of Amplitude, Discharge, Recharge, and Shock. Amplitude causes us to spawn an orb of power when we kill two enemies while amplified. Discharge progresses an internal counter towards an ionic trace on arc weapon kills. Recharge grants 400% additional base grenade and melee ability regeneration rate while at critical health. And lastly, Spark of Shock makes our arc bolt grenades apply jolt to enemies, which will play into the grenade regeneration loop. Let's cover the armor. On the helmet, I used Harmonic Siphon, Special Ammo Finder, and Ashes to Assets. Ashes to assets can be swapped to Heavy Ammo Finder if you'd like. For the gloves, I went with Firepower, Grenade Kickstart, and Impact Induction. Lucky Raspberry had Charged Up, Solar Resistance, and Harmonic Resistance. On the boots, I chose to go with Recuperation, Innervation, and Stacks on Stacks. And on the cloak was Reaper, Powerful Attraction, and Bomber. As usual, build for 100 resilience. This will reduce incoming damage by 30% and help with survivability. However, I have recently received some unsavory comments saying that 100 resilience isn't necessary. So to that I say, spec out the way you want. If you feel that you don't need it, use the stat points elsewhere. Otherwise, slap the rest of your points into Discipline and Mobility. Discipline directly lowers Arc Bolt Grenade cooldown and Mobility reduces dodge cooldowns. If you like air frying enemies, consider dropping a sub. It'll help me out a lot. Now let's move on to the weapon loadout section. You might hate me for the second loadout, but I'm willing to take the hit. Weapon loadout 1 uses Rufus's Fury, Delicate Tomb, and Hothead. Rufus's Fury is perfect since it provides more AoE damage and grenade regen with a demolitionist hatchling roll. I know I've been glazing on this for a bit, but trust me when I say that it puts in work. There are very few auto rifles that sit in the kinetic slot that I would choose over this hit. I know some of you will say that it does less damage than a kinetic would, but it's not really meant to deal that much damage. The time to kill against adds and yellow bars isn't much longer and it doesn't slow down gameplay much. You also have to remember that the rest of the loadout will cover for the damage needed to tear down bigger targets. If you don't like the gun or just want to use another, feel free to do so. Delicate Tomb accomplishes both things needed to take full advantage of Lucky Raspberry. It spawns Ionic Traces on kill, which grants bonus grenade energy, and jolts targets after collecting a trace, which refunds even more grenade energy. The jolt procs it applies are super easy to take advantage of and recharges arc bolts insanely fast. In enemy dense content, the gun can succeed on its own due to its horizontal spread. When you add jolt to the mix and constant grenade spam, it's hard to put down. If you don't have Delicate Tomb, you can use Cold Heart, but keep in mind that it won't jolt targets. The only leg up it has is being able to spawn Ionic Traces traces without the need for kills. Hothead is a go-to arc rocket launcher for DPS. I don't think I need to tell you how many good perk combos there are, but I'll list out a few that work very well with the build today. First up is Field Prep and Explosive Light, which works well regardless of the build. Field Prep increases reserves and reload speed when crouched, so it's very solid all around. Explosive Light buffs up damage when collecting orbs by our arc bulk grenade kills. Another great role is Demolitionist and Lasting Impression. Demolitionist is used as a reload gimmick. Since there will be constant refreshing of arc bulk grenades, reloading by throwing one isn't going to be an issue over time. Lasting Impression is a passive damage buff and doesn't have any activation requirements. This perk nets a 20% total damage increase for each rocket fired. Weapon Loadout 2 uses Partner Dust or the Supremacy, Posterity, and Darcy. Before you start hating on me, please stick around. Pardon our dust applies blind to enemies that we are approaching, essentially keeping them in place to make arc bolts chain more easily. Since it's so easy to use, there isn't too much worry about staying alive amidst constant gunfire. The role that I found to be most useful was quick launch, disorienting grenades, auto-loading holster, and vorpal weapon. If you can get a handling master work, use that. If you want to lean into long-range gunplay, try out the supremacy. Against beefy units, pumping in shots is pretty easy. 
I always use my rewind rounds at 4 times the charm roll because it has such good ammo economy. This gun also helps with Lucky Raspberry's ability regenerate, tagging a jolted enemy and laying into them with the Supremacy or Regen Arc Bolt Grenade energy. The shots from the Supremacy don't hit as hard, but the sheer amount of shots will make up for that. Combined with the Jolt debuff, it'll tear through enemies. Posterity is a solid arc weapon. Since it rolls with full shot in the third column, it synergizes very well with Lucky Raspberry. It can also roll with Frenzy in the fourth column for additional damage. This has been my favorite primary arc weapon for a very long time since it's very easy to use and because of the amazing perk combination. If you want to use Rampage instead of Frenzy, that's fine, but you will be losing out on handling and reload speed. Again, you can always use the Iclos SMG, but this is just my preference. Alright, now let's get to the controversial pick of the bunch, that being Darcy. Darcy highlights enemies after hovering over them while ADS, provides health and shield info and other information, but the real reason we're using it today is for the rest of the kit. After highlighting an enemy, Darcy is granted 35% increased precision damage, additional aim assist, minus 50% recoil, minus 50% accuracy cone size, and 50% flinch resistance. It's a lot of stats that don't get mentioned in other reviews of the weapon, and while they aren't game changing, they do make the gun feel a little bit better. While an enemy is highlighted, any hits with the gun will jolt enemies. This is the only gun in the game that can jolt on command. Unlike other weapons, Darcy does not require a kill to proc bolt shot, and because of that, it can help regen arc bolt grenades whenever it's needed. The whole loadout focuses on staying at range, and Darcy can help facilitate that. Once Jolt is applied to an enemy, you can switch back to the Supremacy to keep rocking the debuff to regen the grenades. Give it a try, and let me know what you think. Lastly, let's go over the game loop. In order to regen grenades as fast as possible, we need to proc Jolt on targets constantly and collect ionic traces. Begin combat by throwing your arc bolt grenade into a group of enemies, jolting them and priming them for ability regen. Next, use your arc weapon of choice, preferably one with Volt Shot, and kill the Jolt's target. This will prime Volt Shot for the next encounter and hopefully top off the rest of the grenade energy needed. Hit the next group with another grenade and use Volt Shot to apply Jolt to another target. Continue this loop and use Cover to stay alive. If there are red bars that are getting too close, don't be afraid to use Combination Blow. Keep the loop alive by playing from mid to long range and using Jolt to add clear. Rinse and repeat. Now let's get onto my thoughts about the Lucky Raspberry rework. After some time, I have to say that it isn't that buff for the exotic, but it sacrificed what was so unique about it. For one, my main issue with the old iteration was that grenades were hard to recharge if the chain wasn't complete. If the grenade didn't regenerate, you were essentially a sitting duck and had to rely on orbs to get it back. This wasn't really a bad thing though since you were incentivized to place your grenades in locations that would guarantee a full chain. The rework to Lucky Raspberry completely stripped it of its lucky aspect. It no longer relies on chains to regen energy, just ionic traces and jolt procs. The problem is that it did away with the old concept altogether. I think a good compromise would be to add the rework on top of the old iteration. I find that the grenade spam works really well right now, but having to back it up with the full build kind of sucks. The charm of the old Lucky Raspberry was not having to really build for it. It was one of the OG exotics from the Red War before build crafting was even a real thing. It just worked, and with the new mod system, it continued to work just fine. It might have lagged behind a bit from the others, but not by much. The rework necessitates building into it, which kind of ruins the fun. It's ironic coming from someone who likes to build craft, but that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope this updated video is somewhat helpful. After making my first Warframe video, I'm happy to be back to Destiny. A lot has changed in the time that I was gone, and I have a lot of catching up to do. I also realize that my audience won't always like Warframe content, but that's not going to make me stop. Making content for both games is something that I plan to do for a long while. As always, thank you for watching, and happy farming.